I can hear okay. you. Lisa. Very good. Just wanted to check again. Good morning. Welcome to FSC First. On behalf of our president, Shelley Gross Wade, our chief financial officer, Beverly Everson Jones, and our senior vice president of business administration and loan operations, Don Metley, welcome to our organization and welcome to session one of how to get a yes to your request. This session is going to be all about putting you on the right path to complete a loan application to fund your business operations for needs you have now, or it may be coming up in the short term or long term. Uh, during today's presentation, we're going to be referencing several materials that I want you to be aware of. Please keep handy your participant guide. Keep your camera on so we can just see your beautiful faces, engage your interactions with us from time to time. Your microphones will be open and sometimes they will be muted for input. Uh, in the event that anything goes wrong and you get disconnected, please hang on. We'll make attempts to get you back into the session as soon as we can. Things happen. We don't want to say it will happen, but we hope to have no flaws in the presentation. We're going to be communicating openly to you and you'll have a chance to communicate with us by a chat, raising your hand or by poll polling questions. So sit back, enjoy, and be prepared to learn some good information that will allow you to be successful in your business operations when it comes to funding, getting a yes to your loan request. Today, you'll have the opportunity to hear from Eddie Tuvan and me. I'll let Eddie introduce himself and I'll follow up. Thanks, Stu. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining this first event from FSC First. We are an organization focused primarily on lending to small minority women-owned and veteran businesses in and around the state of Maryland with our offices headquartered in Prince George's County. I am a 30-year veteran of small business lending and real estate development in this region and been very actively involved in SBA lending in particular to assist entrepreneurs in either acquiring or uh, building brand new businesses, building buildings for owner-occupied real estate and the like. Our 12 different loan programs that we administer or assist with are available for your viewing pleasure on the FSC First website under the programs. Please take a look at that today as we uh, continue here to go forward to try and help you get better responses from lenders by being more prepared to be able to provide them with the kind of materials that they're looking for and talk banker talk. Stu? Thanks, Eddie. My name is Stuart Smith. I'm the business development manager here at FSC First. I'm a 40 year banker with experience in all facets of banking from retail operations through commercial lending and investments. Both Eddie and I bring expertise to the table in relationship management to ensure that we're gonna be connected to you, committed to you, and ensuring that you get the proper attention to your funding request that will lead you to a yes to request, a yes to your request, funding for your business needs. So again, to reiterate, today's session is about helping small business owners prepare for applying for funding and discover what commercial lenders look for in reviewing your business loan application. Keep in mind that preparation is gonna be key. You just don't want to wait to the last minute. So if you anticipate you have a, a funding need or will be uh, having one in the long term, start gathering your information now so we can help you along with that process. And that would be stated on page three of your participants guide. At FSC First, we like to just talk about our company as a whole, we, what our mission, vision, and capacities are. Um, from a mission standpoint, FSC First is a reliable provider of creative and innovative business financing solutions to established and emerging businesses in the state of Maryland. We provide comprehensive loan administration services for loan programs that stimulate the growth and development of the local economy. Our vision, and this is important because this is what we stake our hat on each and every day. 
We are the premier lending partner for businesses in the region, providing creative and innovative financial solutions to grow and sustain the local economy. Our capability is all wrapped around our small team of 11 individuals that work hard every day, well over 40 hours during the week to ensure that we're providing the utmost service to the application process and the service to loans that have been booked with us at FSC First. Take a look here at page four of your participant guide and think about what your mission and vision is. It's something that you should have prepared so that you can communicate it very clearly to someone in a bank including the underwriters who are not going to be with you physically at your location of your business, but will give them a quick snapshot of who you are and what you're all about. That was great, Eddie. And that hits on a very key point. When you interact with Eddie or me, it's your opportunity to sell us. Uh, it's what some folks call an elevator speech. You've got to get us excited about you, get us excited about your business, so we can jump in full speed to help you. So today's workshop uh, is designed around four key lessons. Lesson one is gonna be the pre-qualification requirements. Lesson two is gonna be the business loan application review. Lesson three is gonna be a review of financial statements. And lesson four is gonna be business loan application exercises to kind of put it all together. And it's always good to come to us early at FSC First. We will be able to give you some guidance because of our expertise in the marketplace and how long Stu and I have been involved with banking as to where you may best fit in terms of where you are with your business. What's the, is it an existing business? Does it have historicals? Is it a brand new business? Is it all based on pro formas? And what kind of lending you would be able to apply for? So the earlier you come to us, the better. Each of you in your registration process should have completed a pre-assessment. Pre that pre-assessment is gonna be vital to us to be able to reach out to you, to understand where you are in the operating cycle of your business and to ensure that you're ready to start the application process to address your funding needs. So be truthful with us when it says, are you considering funding that if you anticipate having a need to answer yes to that request now anyway, so we'll have information to reach back and assist you. And just as feedback, I read some of the pre-assessment materials and you really do need to know how much you're looking to request. And it has to be within a reasonable range with something that makes sense based on some assumptions that Stu and I are gonna talk about later with projected numbers or based on the ability to deal with it historically. And the range should be tight. You shouldn't be asking for, well, I need a million to two million. That's a hundred percent difference in terms of the value. And the banks will look at that and say, well, they don't really know where they fit at the moment. And that's part of the issue with going too early to the banker before you come to say Stu and I to talk about it. But let's move over to pre-qualification requirements. Lesson one, pre-qualification requirements. Um, we're gonna be begin talking about the pre-qualification requirements. But before that, we just want to have some engagement with you, the participants in our session. So we'd like each of you to raise your hand in the program to indicate if you've ever applied for a business loan. So please take a second and raise your hand so we can just see that count and move forward after we review it. So I see one, is that correct? I see one. Two, Cynthia, three. Three, three. yes, yeah, three. Okay. Hey, Cynthia, we definitely know you. Okay. Thank you, everybody, for engaging and raising your hand to let us know where you stand. What is a loan application? Uh, participant guide, page five. 
A loan application is used by you, the borrower, to apply for a loan. Through the loan application, borrowers can reveal key details about their finances to us, the lender. The application is critical to determining whether the lender will grant the request for funds or credit or give us the ability to get back with you to get further information because our desire is not to decline you. But I've got to stress that each participant that is going to be applying for a loan at FSC First or any organization will need to sit down with that application, carefully review the application, and be prepared to answer all questions and content from a factual standpoint and be very precise and consistent in what you include in your application. We're going to go over what needs to be attached to the application in a couple of slides. But right now, one key thing that may sound so basic, but yet we see it violated so many times. Please fill in the application uh, by typing it in and typing it in legibly. Please fill in every section that you're supposed to fill in. Please make sure you sign it, whether it's by hand or electronically, and date. And please make sure that you don't send some other bank's application to a different bank. It doesn't show your sincere interest in borrowing from that particular organization. Good point, Eddie. Uh, and, and it's a good time for us to jump in and tell everyone that we made the giant leap to ensure that our application process is to be completed online. In your participants guide, you will see a link to the online application that you can type in and that will help us immensely to see that information typed for our follow-up. Now, in terms of borrowing needs, I'd like to just take a second to say what FSC first funds in the marketplace. We fund working capital. We, were, we fund needs for equipment and machinery purchases, furniture fixtures, land and building. Eddie gets real excited about land and billing finances. So let me give you a second to talk about that, Eddie. So our program primarily uh, focuses on the Small Business Administration's SBA 504 loan program. It's a fantastic program. It comes in two parts. But first of all, let me just say that it can only be used for owner-occupied commercial real estate it has to be a for-profit entity. There are some restrictions as to certain types of businesses, gambling, et cetera, are not permitted by the government for this loan program. But what it does is it is a facility created by the government to help small businesses keep as much working capital as they possibly can, and at the same time, own their own building on reasonable rates with reasonable terms. So for as little as 10% down, you can get into owning a facility and help create your own personal wealth rather than renting from somebody else helping create their wealth. And these programs, we work with uh, local banks as our partner. They come in at 50%. We can come in as high as 40% and you're in for your 10%. It's a really great program. And the current rates for our piece, that middle piece I spoke about, is 2.88% fixed for 25 years. So not all of you may be looking for a building at this time, but it's something to think about, whether it's an office condominium or whether it's a warehouse or, or, or a building that um, is a specialty type building. We've done hotels, car washes, convenience stores, and doctor's offices and you know, warehouse manufacturing facilities and so forth, all throughout the state of Maryland. Thanks, Eddie. And that, and that ownership piece is so critical right now in that when we get your application and you complete your application for us to review it, we're going to see whether you own a rent. And we will look at what you're paying for rent if you're operating in a facility, you know, that you don't own. And we can tell you you buy a matter of an exercise, if you're gonna pay that same amount, how much property you could actually purchase. And because we're so committed to your business owning assets as opposed to renting assets. So now if you're on page five of your participants guide, I wanna talk about 
the pre-qualification document checklist. What we actually require to make an initial assessment from our applicants are the completed loan application. That's the online form. We're gonna require a personal financial statement from each business owner. We're gonna talk about that in detail later, but you, the business owner, are the business. So we're gonna to look to your financial capabilities just as we look to the business to support the funding request. And you will hear in that personal financial statement that is simply a list of your assets and your liabilities. So we can determine your net worth. Remember, if you're married, your assets are joint. So that means you have to send us a personal financial statement with your spouse's name listed and your spouse's signature. We see this a lot where people make the mistake of only sending it in with one name because they think that, well, I'm the guarantor, I'm the business owner, my spouse is not guaranteeing. That's okay. The spouse is not guaranteeing by putting their name on the personal financial statement, but we have to have it. Good point, Eddie. Third, we're going to ask for individual tax returns for the past three years. The tax returns that you will upload to us must be the complete tax returns, including all of the necessary schedules and attachments and your W-2 that were filed. Um, that's critical. Number four, U.S. corporate or partnership tax returns. We need those for the past three years. Again, all, says, all schedules are fully completed. Now, I just want to take a moment right now to talk about business tax returns because there's a myth out in the business community that small businesses need to deduct as much as they can to avoid a tax liability when they file their taxes. And I will say this, if you never, never, ever plan on borrowing money, that could be good advice. But technically, you want to be able to show how your business is performing, the profitability, the bottom line, to show that you can qualify for business funding. It's not about tax deductions. It's about the profitability of your business. Please, please, please keep that in mind. We're gonna ask for interim financial statements on your business. That is to define it. We're in August of 2021. We'd like to see a balance sheet, income statement and cash flow statement January to as close to August, 2021 as we can. We're gonna ask for three years of existing business financial statements. Again, the profit and loss statement, the cash flow statement, the balance sheet for the past three years. We're gonna ask you for what we call a projected P&L statement, balance sheet and cash flow statement. So what you will actually do is that you will look at your financial statements you provided us, and you're gonna to have to keep in mind some key defendable assumptions that you will use to build your projections. In other words, how many customers you think you're gonna to increase to? How many products and services are you going to sell? Are your expenses going to stay static or are they going to go up? So there should be some percentages in your mind as to how to put together your projected P&L statements that we need for projections. And you, should know, you, should know that. you should know the ratios for the specific industry that you're involved in. And you should always have the availability to generate your own interim financial statements right off of your desktop. And that's going to be the subject of a future uh, webinar that we'll be giving that'll be led by uh, Beverly. Thanks, Eddie. Finally, we're going to be asking for a business plan, which every business should have. A key mistake a lot of businesses think that they write a business plan just to get funding. Not true. That's a part of the funding process, but you need a business plan or executive summary to keep you committed to the operations that you decided you're gonna undertake. It's gonna be your roadmap for proceeding and making your business grow and prosper. If you don't have a business plan, please don't go out and pay large sums of money to prepare one. If you'll email me, which the address will be at the end of this presentation, I'll send you the SBA scores draft uh, format that was made by a, a large corporation paid for having it put together, which will be your guide. And it works beautifully. And if you need assistance, you can get free assistance from the SBA score office 
the senior core of retired executives. Now, uh, we talked a lot about the requirements for our pre-qualification to review your loan application. Something very, very critical for you to understand is that you operate your business each and every day. In our opinion, you must have an accountant on board that can support your operations by putting everything down on paper in the required financial statement format. You can give them copies of your receipts, uh, your revenue sales tickets, but you need to make sure that they can represent your business on paper. You never ever want to get in front of a banker and not be prepared to show your business operations on paper because it's gonna raise some questions as to how committed you are about your business. So get an accountant on board, get accounting software that can help your accountant prepare your, your operations. And keep in mind that tax returns and business financials are two separate operations that your accountant should help you be able to clearly present to bankers. With that being said, we're gonna to try to do a poll question right now. And I want you to think about all that we've talked about so far. And here is the question. How many items on a checklist do you already have? So if you would indicate that in the poll, that would be great. Take a couple minutes and, and complete that poll so we can have an assessment of that. I'll give us another minute and then uh, we shall proceed. While we're doing that, we're lucky to have online with us our underwriter, Andrea, who is on the left coast of the United States in sunny California. And she points out to us that one of the things that we also need in our initial package is a schedule of debt that matches uh, the long-term debts that are shown on your balance sheet. Correct, Andrea? Did I point that out properly? She's <coughs> giving us... <coughs> Sorry. Yes. Um, I was muted. Um, yes. It has to match in order to send it into SBA, it needs to match the balance sheet. Excellent. All right, we're gonna give another 30 seconds for the polling questions to be completed and then we will move on. And when we look at those polling questions and the answers you've given us, that will give us the ability to determine where we are in the process and how we can help you help you bridge the gap so you can get a yes to your request. Okay, wow, we've got some information here. It looks like uh, we've got 75% response for people that have items one through four. Thank you. And 25% had all the documents. Yeah. Do, you, do you mind if I interject in here, guys? Just to point out some things that I've seen on balance sheets lately that are incorrect, that type of Andrew, thing. Andrew, I was going to say that we're going to have an in-depth uh, process with all financial statements in our next session. Okay, awesome. All right, let's move to the next slide. Okay. Very, very Thank good. you all. Okay, next polling question right now, based on the initial presentation, if you would take a second to answer the question, on a scale of one to five, with five being the greatest, rate your understanding of these documents. This will help us to know where you are in understanding how those, those, those financial documents would be collected and given to us. Again, with five being greatest, go ahead and rate that for us. Looks like we've got some decent understanding that's been coming in by the polling questions. Just a couple more seconds to collect all of those numbers. While it's exciting to see 50% of the group feels pretty comfortable with your understanding of that requirement, that's great. All right, thank you for those polling question answers. Um, I know our guide says we're gonna have a five minute break, but I don't think we're gonna need a full five minutes. So take a second if you would, stand up, 
stretch, uh, flex your arms. Think about what you heard before. If you need to send us a chat question, we can answer those for you. But uh, just be prepared for us to move on in the presentation in a couple minutes. And again, it's not going to take five minutes. But while we're in this break period right now, I just want to emphasize to everybody what we call at FSC First, our core values. And these are some things that you may want to think about in the day-to-day -day operations of your business that you can clearly talk about and demonstrate the core values of your business. But at FSC First, our core values are that we are flexible, we're integral, results-driven, we're strategic, and we're trustworthy. So that's what we demonstrate, Eddie and I and our whole team each and every day, when we're engaging with public clients. Continue to rest for a second, your quick break, and then we'll get back into it in just a second. We'll get started in one more minute, guys. Hey, and Eddie, when you were talking about our underwriters, did you mention Ron Wark here on the East Coast? No, I didn't mention Ron. Is he online with us? He's, he's on only, the he's on he the only call. has 40 some years of experience in the business. So Ron Wark is our uh, underwriter here in our office in Prince George's County. And he works on a lot of deals for us. He's an expert in SBA lending. And typically, he supports a lot of our deals that are not SBA 504. Please say hello, Ron. Hello, everyone. All right, we're going to begin. Hope everybody's back. So we're now going to be in lesson two. Please have your participant guide open to page six but we're gonna go into the business loan application review. The FSC first loan application must be completed fully. Carefully review the checklist to confirm all documents are included in the loan request. Again, we went over those prerequisites earlier, but in the online application, you're gonna be asked to upload those documents, which you should have in terms of an electronic copy of your tax returns. And you will be able to get our personal financial statement off of our website. And the other financial documents, you should be getting an electronic copy from your accountant to move forward. So take time before you sit down at the online application link to ensure that you gather all of your documents. Now turn to page seven in your participant guide. So the first section details your contact information, including your current physical address. And from there, the form asks for everything from your financial history to property owned, information like salary, other sources of income may be requested. And uh, it also may include a necessary credit check authorization. But let's go through ours because on page eight, you'll see it. And still, let's go section by section, huh? Okay. So on page eight at the top left, you see the contact information. Yes, we wanna look at your business website. We're gonna go look at that. And yes, we need to know that your EIN is, ava is available. And one of the things we're gonna check, the first thing that Stu and I go to look for is, is your business in good standing? And you can do that yourself by going to the Maryland uh, website, the SDAT website, and confirm whether you're in good standing or not. A lot of times people haven't paid their property tax bill, personal property tax for 
to $300 and they lose their good standing, in which case we cannot make the loan. So please make sure you do that. Uh, give us your phone number that we can best reach you because someone's going to call you and ask ser serious questions about what's going on. We need the ownership and we need to know 100% of who owns this business. So break it out by who they are, what percentage they own. In our electronic system, you'll see at the lower portion of the, of the left side on page eight that it identifies an opportunity for you to enter additional names and any interested parties that, can, that are involved in the, in the business. And then starts the business information. Remember what Stu said, all the loans that we make have some sort of economic impact as it relates to job creation or job retention. So we really need to know where you're located in terms of a district in Prince George's County or another county in the, in the state and how many employees you currently have and how many additional employees you're going to add as a result of this loan opportunity. That's really critical for us. It goes in as part of the requirements for these programs. What type of organization are you? By the time you come to us, you should already have your organization established. You should tell us how many years it's been established, whether it's private for profit or nonprofit, what the ownership type is. Is it an S corp? Is it a C corp? Is it an LLC? Now let's go to page nine, Stu. Why don't you take it from there? Okay. We're going to look at, after we've looked at your business information, which is your business info, your use of proceeds, how you plan on using the money you're requesting from FSC first or another lender. You're going to complete also a section that talks about your business indebtedness. That is going to be a section where you list the amount of money that you pay out to other creditors. And you want to make sure you got that as accurate as possible because that information has to match when we do our internal review. Be it federal loans or, or, or leasing debts, you want to make sure you've included all outbound money that you're paying to support your operation. Then there's going to be a questionnaire section that you're going to complete, that you're going to ask some questions about you and your background and the business. So you really want to look in that box click in it and apply the appropriate answers so we can help evaluate your request in the fastest amount of time possible. Now, we're also gonna have a section on a loan application. It's a summary of collateral. Contrary to public opinion, there's no such thing as an as unsecured business loan. So we're gonna look at the assets of the business, the assets of the owners, so we can mitigate risk. Not that we want to ever foreclose on anyone, but we need to be able to mitigate that risk so we aren't the only one, you know, participating and taking a loss. It's also called skin in the game. Uh, supporting documentation is going to be required about you and your business that we can work through that process. And you also, at the end of the application, you're going to agree and certify that information you've given us is true and accurate to the best of your ability. And as Eddie said, there's a DocuSign process that by signing that application, you give us credit, you give us the authorization to pull your credit and to do the necessary background investigations that we need to move forward and address your request. And what you'll see on the top left corner of page 10 is where Stu was referring to the ability to have you upload your various different documents. And that's what he meant by being prepared. As you're going through the application, you're gonna to need to have these documents and they're gonna be uploaded directly through our secure system. And then we'll get them as attachments for our review. And just going back quickly onto page nine to section six and section five, business indebtedness and use of proceeds. When you get to the use of the proceeds, remember that by the time Stu and I finish our review and send it to Andrea or Ron, they're going to want to know who are you writing the check to for all the different funds you're requesting, and they're going to want to know where your actual verification of the owner's contribution amount, what Stu referred to as your sweat in the, into the deal, they're gonna to wanna to see that you were able to earn that amount of money, that it's been sitting in a bank account and you're gonna give statements for three months to prove it. 
So be prepared for that. And when it comes to business indebtedness, make sure you include everything so that it matches your balance sheet so that at that point in time, when you make your application, we know exactly what debts you have out there. And thank you, Cynthia, for your question, because yes, idle is a business debt. So if you have a PPP loan, once you find out that you have a certain portion of that PPP loan forgiven based on the rules, that amount that was unforgiven is a corporate debt and it needs to be listed on your balance sheet as well as this debt schedule. And the same thing goes with an idle loan. That was great amplification, Eddie. Thanks a lot. The, the slide says now we are at a point that we beat you up with a lot of information for a five minute break. I think five minutes may be a little long, but let's just take a, a two or three minute break to just think about all that we've talked about now for you to ask yourself questions. Do you really understand what we've asked for, uh, the process that we're gonna be going through? And you can ask us the question if then anything is unclear in the chat box. So take, take a minute or two, just think about what you've initially heard before we move on to the next lesson in this, how to get a yes to your request. Thanks. Looks like we've got some good information coming in with the chat box, we appreciate it. Just another minute or two before we go into lesson, lesson three, guys. Okay, I'm ready, Ed is ready. So we can proceed with lesson three, financial statements. And you should be in your participant guide on pages 11 and 12. And this is critical information as I spoke to before that you and your accountant should be engaged to make sure that we get this information that can represent your business on paper. Let's talk about an important form right now. The, the first important form is the personal financial statement. This is about you individually, your spouse individually, if a spouse or partner is involved, that we can assess your personal net worth. What it does, it looks at assets, assets of what you own, your home, your real estate, your cars, your furniture, um, whatever is tangible that you can say you own is an asset that you wanna put on your financial statement in the assets section. Next, you're gonna list your liabilities. These are debts or outflows of cash that you pay individually. And then you're gonna have the net result of what we call your net worth, where we will take your assets, minus your liabilities. Net worth simply on paper will represent how much you are worth. And a lot of people don't give themselves credit for the full amount of their net worth because they don't list all of their assets. So again, take inventory of what's in your household and make sure that you show that so we can assess you in the strongest light possible. And in your participant guide does talk about the specific types of assets and liabilities that will help you complete that section. Do not include business assets or liabilities in your personal financial statement. And I think that's a good entry point for me to say, don't make the mistake of trying to co-mingle your personal and business financials into one operation. You technically want to keep those separate. 
So Eddie, I'll let you talk about business financial statements. Great, so let's turn to page 15. And first of all, you'll see the balance sheet. So this is a snapshot that gives you your assets, which equal your liabilities and equity. So when you look at your assets, it, it works its way down from current to uh, other assets and so forth. And the same thing with liabilities. The, the current ones come at the top and then the longer term ones go below. And again, this is as of a specific date. So you'll see at the top, it's, this one was a sample as of April 30th, 2021, et cetera. Make sure that it's listed, it's very clear so that you have a roadmap of how you can manage. And when you talk about you know, small businesses and Stu spoke about this before, you know, if you want to write off every single expense you possibly can and bring your business taxes down to next to negative anything, the sample, I believe, shows a total equity of negative 17000 in this particular example. If you look at the bottom of the uh, balance sheet, the second to last entry. Well, one of the equations that Ron and Andrea are going to look at is your debt to equity ratio. And your debt to equity ratio, just in general, should probably not be more than five, maybe six times. And so in this case, there's no number that this business can achieve a reasonable debt to equity ratio because it's got a negative equity. So if you see that, realize that that's an important piece. Now, on the next page, 16, you'll see the profit and loss statement. It's also known as the income statement. And this is a good example because the one that we have is a comparative one for fictional Jay's construction company. But it gives you the ability to guide the ship. So you can compare um, month to month to month where as a manager, you may see issues. If you suddenly see a huge increase on the expense line that is more than what you're normally seeing, you can take action if you have this available for you. And it's required, for example, in all SBA lending that we have these within a certain period of time. It's really easy to incorporate these using some of the software programs now that are available at reasonable cost to small businesses and entrepreneurs. And there are many, many organizations that give training classes on how to use packages like QuickBooks and so forth. Now, the practice exercise. Stu? Well, let's, let's talk about another important statement before we go to that exercise, Ron. I mean, uh, Eddie, that would be the cash flow statement. The cash flow statement just helps us assess. This is on page 15 of 16 of your guide. It helps us see your operating cycle, which is the cash flow statement. In other words, the cash balance you begin with, look at all of your, your sales, look at your expenses, and the ending cash balance. So that just shows us how your business is, is churning its operations to have cash to continue its, its operations. One important number that bankers look for is called debt service coverage ratio. It's the amount of times that your free cash flow can cover the proposed loan payments. And in all cases that I know about and in what Stu and I operate in our world, a minimum debt service coverage is going to be 1.25 times what the debt is. So if you have a payment of 1,000 per month, they wanna see 1,250 so that we know it's not using up your last nickel and that you've got some cash flow available after you've paid your debt that's available for unforeseen and just operating capital of your business. The better numbers we'd like to see are 1.3, 1.4, 1.5 times. That's even better. But for you to have the ability to determine whether or not you're ready to apply, you should be calculating what the proposed loan may actually cost you and looking at your free cash flow from your income statement 
and off of your tax return, it can be done that way as well, and determining whether or not you're going to meet that number or not. And that also goes back to how much you're charging the business in terms of expenses and whether or not you've got expenses that were personal expenses that you took from your business and reduce the cash flow to a point where you might not qualify for a loan. Very important point, debt service coverage ratio. Yes, it is, Eddie. Great, great point. Before we move on, just a couple of simple clarifications. The balance sheet is called a balance sheet because it must balance. The formula is assets equal at, uh, liabilities plus equity. So you've got to make sure that that balances and, and don't overlook the equity section because equity represents the ownership in the business. When you look at your income statement, you want that net income line at the very bottom to be a positive number, not a red negative number, because that will show your ability to actually pay your, your loan request with us at FSC First or any other organization. All right, that was quite a bit. So we've got an exercise that we want to walk through right now. And we want to ask you, look at your participants guide and you should have a sample of our loan application. And we'd like to ask you to take a couple of minutes and look at a couple of sections and just try to write in your responses to what is required. And then we want to assess how well that you were able to complete that and we'll ask one or two participants to share feedback on completing those sections so we can just gauge you know, how well we've laid it out for you. So take a minute, look at that blank application in your guide, and then we'll talk, get one or two people on the line to talk about you know, were they able to complete it? Did they have any hangups? Was it clear? That'll help us be a better lender. So let's start that process now. And we'll re-engage in, in three to four minutes to have a couple people talk about their experience. Hope everybody is well into trying to complete a section or two so we can make sure that you understand what's being asked of you so we can proceed. I see heads down. That's a good thing. Yay. Keep up that hard work, guys. Notice we got several bashful people too that don't want to show their face, but that's okay. We know you're smiling. Just a couple more minutes and then we're going to ask for volunteers and I hope we don't have to put anyone on the spot, but we want to get some feedback. So be prepared to jump in. And Marissa, will you have to unmute their, mic, their mics as they volunteer? Just another 30 seconds and we'll go ahead and get started, guys. All right, we're gonna go ahead and get started. Um, anyone want to volunteer before we have to pick someone? Cynthia, can I call on you? Unfortunately, I can't find the application. Like I'm looking in the email and 
it doesn't have the, I, I must be missing something. I just, I don't know. Was it in your participants guide, Cynthia? Oh, I'm looking at it on my phone. Um, it's just 20 pages for the presentation. Okay. But I don't see where there's an application. Oh, the sections, it says, sec yeah. I, Is, is that an issue for anyone else out there? Or were you able to see the actual blank application? There's a page that says resources and then it says FSC first website. And I clicked on that. Um, but under that, it says FSC first loan application, but it's just blank. Okay. And that is the area that you would actually complete. In other words, that's what people would complete when they apply with us. Just this blank, it just it, it should have been. A, <laughs> it just says resources and it has the um website of FSC first, and then on the second line, it just says for um loan application, okay. But then it says sign at the bottom, it has like um your FSC first loan officer phone number and email address, but it's just kind of all blank, okay. This is where um, it has, has the information for FSC. So I'm not sure if I'm missing something. And then this is the last page, it's just the contact information. Okay. I apologize. We will make sure that we email everyone the actual application that should have been included in that participant's guide. So very, very sorry for that miscue. But it, it does have a problem. Okay. It's a sample of an uh, uh, application. So it's pre-filled. Were we supposed okay. to utilize that one? Yeah, I mean, that would, yeah, for clarity, if you could look at maybe the pre-filled one and just see how you can complete it. But don't want to burn a lot of time on that. Just understand that you will complete a loan application online and you will see from that sample the questions that you're going to be asked to complete that pertains to you and your individual business. So it's really, Cynthia, it's page eight, nine, and 10. That's okay. the sample. And, yes, um, you. you know, we've got the, the phony name. We don't want to share anybody's real data in there. And um, all the, the different questions that Stu and I went over earlier that need to be asked and the attachments and the answers to the various different questions and so on. Did, uh, Renita, did you start to fill it out? Um, I, yes, I did. Um, I don't have it actively in front of me, but I did start looking at the figures um, when it asked about, you know, if we had any loans, if we had any bonds out, um, it asked about all the income and all the expenses and if there's any current loans. I do have a question if I can ask really quick while I'm on off mute. Um, okay. So my husband and I, we have a catering business. Um, we are looking for funding for that business. However, um, I myself have a childcare business that receive a EIDL. When you do an application for the catering business, do I personally include, I, I assume you include all of your expenses. So if the child care has an EIDL, would that be included on the expenses or the debt? Again, when I, when I went through the presentation, the key thing I, I talked about was don't co-mingle businesses and personal information. So that, EI, that EIDL, would be a debt of the child care business. It would not be a debt of the catering business. And because my child care is currently um, identifying as a, it was when I did that application, it was identifying as a sole proprietorship. That's the only reason why I'm asking because they uh -huh. kind of put it as a personal the S they, they, yeah, the way that they did it, they came back and they, they said that they had to remove it from the EIN and attach it as if it was a personal. So it should show up on your Schedule C on your personal tax return then, if that's how you file it. 
and that business, when you prepare the balance sheet and you prepare your debt schedule, that 30 year loan at what is it, three and a quarter or three and a half percent should be displayed along with its current balance on your debt schedule for the business. But the, way you're, the way you're filing it is on, on your tax return. Did, um, when you look through these, did anybody have a comment? Was it easy? Was it hard? Is the information being asked for hard to understand? Um, this is very questions? simple. It's very simple compared to what I, I've seen. It's very simple. Glad to hear that. Anyone else? Juan, Kennedy, I know you do this for your customers all the time. I see January Hester's here. Did you take a look at it? Hi, Eddie. This is Kenite. Hey. Yes, it's very simple. In fact, I recommend clients to you all all the time and help them get prepared for you all. Um, it, I, if I could just ask a question, Eddie, you're probably familiar with this because you and I talked back and forth about this before. I don't know if there was a glitch going on in the system, if this has been um, found or corrected, but I had previously applied for a loan um, and come to find out none of my supporting documents were uploaded. And as you all know, you can't even advance through the online application without uploading documents or even submit it without the upload. And for some reason, um, in, in Salesforce, you all didn't have any of my documents. It just so happened shortly after I received my EIDL loan. So that's why I didn't, um, you know, come back to continue to, you know, figure it out or reapply. So yeah. that was a blessing, but just wanted to make sure that you all maybe took care of whatever happened because at that particular time, I was in dire need and maybe another client find themselves in that same situation. To answer your question, uh, what we found out, and we just introduced Salesforce this year, initially the size requirement was too small for the size of some of the documents that were being scanned or sent to us in PDF or JPEG format. So we've overcome that size limitation now. We sincerely apologize that you had to face that, uh, that limitation before. So, and I also want to point out and thank you because I know your company specializes in writing business plans and that you can assist some small business owners uh, in many cases for free. Uh, and you posted your website, www.ti-y.com. So that's a great, you're a great resource and a great partner for us. And um, yes, as we implemented this system, you pointed it out perfectly we had a mandatory requirement for uploading specific documents and yet people were able to get through the system and their documents didn't upload. Now, if it happens again, for whatever reason, uh, Stu and I have a share file link that we can send and we can securely allow you to upload to a share file and then we can download those documents ourselves, put them in our folders, have them, have them fully reviewed, send out what happens is Stu and I, pre-qualify every request that comes in. If it's something that makes sense that we think we can do, we'll put a letter of interest together and we'll send a letter of interest out to you. And then we'll ask you as a borrower to sign that letter of interest and send it back with a deposit check, which we use for things like pulling personal credit. It's, there's a fee for that. Obtaining an appraisal or an environmental report, uh, you know, other fees and so on. If we go through the process and we end up turning it down before it gets sent to the SBA and before it goes into underwriting, we'll send you back anything that we haven't used. But once it goes into underwriting, our position is that we've spent the money and it's, we're not asking for a lot of money up front. But once that process starts, uh, then we come back and we start asking the series of questions that we need to know, which will come up in a future workshop with us. Anybody else, any other comments on the practice exercise, which we sort of half did? Well, on behalf of Eddie and me and the entire FSC First organization, we wanna thank everybody for joining our workshop today. We hope it's been a tremendous value add to you and your business needs now in the future. We wanna also ask you to complete the survey 
that was attached so we can assess how we can to perform better in the future or make necessary changes. And also let you know the next workshop will be session two, understanding secured financing options is where we will take deep di deeper dives into the application financial document requirement. So again, thank you. Please take time to complete the survey. And before we end the meeting, you know, Eddie and I will just stay on if there are any lingering questions that anyone has to ask before we end this today's session. Anyone have any questions? Well, thank you so much. Again, complete the survey. We look forward as an organization to be reactive and proactive to satisfying your financial needs that you have may have today or in the future. And please keep our website in mind, fscfirst.com. Our contact information is provided. Use us as a resource. Reach out to us anytime. No question, you know, is too big or too small. We want to make sure that we're going to be your first resource.